Good morning, and welcome to the First Christian Church of North Hollywood and our online service of worship. We are so glad that you joined us today. We will be having a children's moment, so please have the children ready so they can enjoy that time, which is especially for them. And we will be celebrating Holy Communion so you can get the elements that remind you of the bread and cup and have them ready when we come to that portion of our service. Let us now enjoy the beautiful call to prayer as we continue in our worship together. He knows the way to wherever you are. He knows the way to the depth of your heart. He knows the way because he's already been where you're going. Jesus will meet you. As we come to these moments of prayer, we are aware that we've been through a very turbulent week, week and a half, really, that there has been much unrest in our country. And it's clear that there are still so many people who feel marginalized, people who feel that they are not represented or treated fairly. There are others who are angry because they don't understand. There are others who are angry and feel the need to go and loot stores or destroy property. It's hard for us to figure this out. It's hard for us to wrap our brains around what is going on. And it tends to make us fearful and anxious in a time where we have already been experiencing fear and anxiety as we've been asked to stay at home to keep ourselves safe from a virus. It is all compounded. So as we come to this time, we come bringing our hearts. We come bringing our anxiety, our fear, our worry. We come bringing our anger and our frustration. We come bringing the places where we don't understand, but we would seek illumination. We would seek to understand one another. And we would invoke God's presence and God's love as we do this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Will you join me in prayer? And we will begin with a few moments of silence. Let us pray. God, we come to you first and always in gratitude for your love, for your protection, for your grace that fills us. And understanding that this love, this grace is extended to everyone, no matter who they are, no matter what their walk of life. And it's sometimes difficult for us to navigate the way forward but we come to you bringing all of our fears as well as our hopes and our dreams. We come to you bringing the desires of our hearts. We come to you trusting in your great love and in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to you knowing that you will always be there for us. Thank you, God, for your presence, for your strength, for your love, for your spirit that blesses us and fills us. And so we continue, God, to ask for vision, to continue to ask for you to show us the way forward so that all people are brought into the conversation, so that all people are able to come to the table as equals, with their voices being heard, understanding that every person has a deep desire to feel understood, to feel felt, to feel welcomed. One is not more important than another. One is not looked upon with more favor than another, but that we are all brothers and sisters. We thank you, God, as I said, for this love that you give to us. 
and we ask that you help us out of that love to live our lives so that we can make a change in the world, each in our own small way. But we know, we trust that when we gather in your name, and we feel deeply that love and the compassion for one another that Christ felt for those who were crucified on either side of him. The same Jesus who would say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That you would help us to learn what it is that we need to do. Thank you, God, for your blessing, for your grace. Thank you, God, that we have one another and this community of faith. And thank you, God, that you have given us this beautiful earth upon which we live. Help us to be brother and sister to all. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious name and ask that you continue to fill us, to bless us, as together we join in praying as Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey kiddos, today I want to share a story with you that happened long, long ago. One day, God looked around the world and saw that he had people all over the world. Then he noticed that there was this empty place right here. So God put four people in this place and he said, you will be my master of medicine and you will be my sincere security. And you, ma'am, you will be my thoughtful teacher and you will be my master with money. And God said to them, if you are to have a beautiful land, you must first love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And second, you must love your neighbor as yourself. Any questions? And sincere security said, oh God, I have a question. Hmm, who's my neighbor? And God said, sincere security, anybody who steps foot on this land is your neighbor and you are to love them like you love yourself. Now go and be great. And so they begin to play amongst each other and talk to each other. When they needed security, the sincere security would help them get in a corner and the sincere security would scan the perimeter, make sure nothing was out there. When they needed to be taught, the thoughtful teacher would come and spend time teaching them all of the knowledge God had blessed her with. And they got smarter. <coughs> when someone got sick, <coughs> the master of medicine would give them the best medicine in the world. And they had a great, great community. And they made God so happy. And so one day God heard a prayer from a far, far place somewhere else in the world. And that prayer said, God, just help me get around people who care about me and who love me. And God answered that prayer and bought somebody new into the field. And this person was the praying warrior. And God said, I will guide you to a community of people who are so caring and so loving that they will take care of you. And the praying warrior said, but God, I, I don't have anything. All I have is far, far away. And God said, don't you worry, they'll love you. And so one day the praying warrior made his way into the new community. And when he got there, the master of medicine went to one corner. The teacher followed him and the master of money went as well. And the sincere security stood in front of them. And they looked and said, what are you doing here? And he said, I just wanted some help. I prayed and I prayed and I've been led to your community. And they said, well, we have nothing to offer you. And he looked to God and prayed said, God, please, you guided me here. Why? They don't want to help me. And God said, just keep trying, keep trying. So he said, do any of you have any medicine? I'm sick. The master of medicine said, well, I have medicine, but can't give you my best because I have to keep it for us. But here's a little something. And he looked, took 
the medicine, but it wasn't the best, so it didn't get better. And he said, are there any teachers around so I can learn how to really help myself get better? And the teacher said, well, I've taught them everything I know, and I'm not sure you would know what to do with that knowledge. And he said, but I promise I will. I promise, just help me. And Sincere Security said, that is enough. They've said all they could say. And then God said, pause. I put you on this earth to first love me and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Why is it that you all are not loving your neighbor? The master of money said, well, because he is a new person. We've never seen him before. And this is our home. God said, no, it's my home. And I've given you skills and blessed you with so much. How can you not share with your neighbor. And before they could say anything else, God said, so you pray about what you should do next. And the praying warrior got down on his knees and he said, dear God, I'm not sure why you put me here but I know I'm supposed to be here for a reason. Please give them the heart to love me as they love themselves. Amen. Amen, kiddos. My question to you is, what do you think they should do next? Hello, people of the church. Uh, I will be reading the scripture today from my bedroom, where my bed is definitely made. <laughs> Today's scripture comes out of the book of Matthew. I'll be reading chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It reads, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will be see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you're, when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kind of evil against you because of me. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of this holy word. Amen. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footsteps firm. Many will see, many will see and fear. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I've said several times during the past few weeks that I feel like I have used up all of my words. I have known what I wanted to say, but the right words just seem to have eluded me. This morning, I'm going to find those lost words to express some of my feelings. Two weeks ago tomorrow, George Floyd was murdered by a police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Since then, we have had nearly two weeks of protest and demonstrations. Some were violent, most of them were peaceful but it has been a surreal time for me. 
This is the third riot I have lived through since making Los Angeles my home in 1961. In each of these riots, people have marched, they've protested, they've confronted police, buildings have been burned, and this enormous destruction has been brought to the city. Following the first two riots in the summer of 1965 and the spring of 1992, community leaders, politicians, police, clergy, and civic leaders met in groups charged with a variety of tasks, including improving police and citizen relationships. Now, while these groups worked faithfully and diligently, and their recommendations did bring about some positive changes, especially in LAPD policies. Their efforts, in my opinion, through no fault of their own, fell far short of making major, lasting, just changes a reality in our community. So here we are now, 28 years after the 1992 riot, having witnessed another period of protests, demonstrations, riots, looting, destruction of businesses, National Guard troops patrolling our streets, and more cries for change. Now, 1965 was a year with a long, hot summer. And those who lived in the ghettos of our city felt trapped. There were no jobs, no educational opportunities. There was increased crime. And when emotions reached a boiling point, Cities throughout our nation exploded with demonstrations and violence. The 1992 riot was a reaction in Los Angeles to four white police officers being acquitted of beating a black man in a highway patrol roadside stop. Los Angeles once again exploded with demonstrations, protests, violence, looting, and destruction. But in 2020, the entire world watched as a helpless black man laid on the ground, gasping for breath as the knee of a white police officer pressed on his neck. As people throughout the nation watched in disbelief and horror, demonstrations spontaneously began expressing the outrage, outrage of not only the black community, but of every fair-minded, law-abiding citizen of every race and nationality throughout our nation. I have many friends who are recovering alcoholics, and one of the things they have shared with me is that until a person is willing to admit that they are an alcoholic and ask for help, there is nothing that can be done to help them. My friends have said that quite often a person has to hit rock bottom and lose everything before they can stop drinking and start on the road to recovery. Others, however, are much wiser and they realize the downward spiral they are in and they take action to correct it before they hit bottom. I think our society has made progress in correcting the problems that came out of the previous two riots. I think leaders in our community are trying desperately to solve the issues of racism, of prejudice, of injustice, of unfairness, and of homelessness. I don't ever, ever want to think, despite the visions we might have from the past two weeks of looting and rioting and burning and destruction, that our society is spiraling downward. We have to be wise. We all have to keep working to keep that from ever happening. We have to work together, people of all races, cultures, backgrounds, nationalities, and religions. And I believe that we, as members of the family of Jesus, have to have faith that following in his footsteps will always lead us in the right direction. In our annual pastor's class, which is for young people preparing to be baptized, we refer to the Sermon on the Mount as the core teachings of Jesus. It is one of the main passages of scripture that we want our students to read and then read again. It's only three chapters long, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. 
and I always challenge the class to read it several times by pointing out how much shorter it is than just one of the Harry Potter books that most of them have read. The sermon begins with the Beatitudes. Every one of these nine points can apply to the situation in our nation today. But I believe that three of them are especially meaningful to all that has happened in the last two weeks. We read in the Beatitudes, blessed are those who mourn. I believe that we are all mourning. Our entire nation is mourning for George Floyd, for his family, for the police, for the city of Minneapolis, and in reality, for our entire nation. We mourn when we are faced with atrocities, injustices, and unfairness to race and creed. We mourn when we see violence in our streets. We mourn for lost opportunities to have changed what previously cried out desperately to be changed. And we live with the hope that we will be comforted by God's presence, his love, and his guidance as we continue to change our communities to be fair and just for everyone. Then we read, blessed are the peacemakers. Now, often people believe that peace is the absence of war, but that is not the only definition. Peace can also be a state of mind that calls for action. It is a state of inner calmness, of restfulness, the absence of mental conflict. It is a state in which the most creative work, the most important task, can be accomplished in amazing ways and in which our minds are open to the powerful leadings of God. We as individuals and as a community must seek a state of inner peace in order to be peacemakers so that wherever there is conflict, anger, prejudice, hatred, injustice, and unfairness toward anyone, we can have the presence of mind and the courage to intervene and to act like the active children of God. And finally, we, we read, blessed are the pure in heart. Once we have attained a sense of inner peace, and once we have prepared ourselves to be peacemakers, we are prepared to seek a pureness of heart. Jesus' teaching says that the pure of heart will see God. I believe that that has a very important and special message for us today. I believe, and because of my belief, I have been called naive, unrealistic, and a whole list of other descriptive adjectives that God can be seen in everyone, even in those who act in the most atrocious ways. I believe that we are all children of God and that when we go astray, when we commit crimes, when we violate the lives of others, when we act contrary to the laws of God, God is angry and in his anger, and disappointment, God cries, as any parent would, because one of God's children has sinned against him. But our God is a very healing and reconciling force, and I do not believe that God ever gives up on any of us. So when we have come to the place in our lives when we can see God in the face of everyone, we shall see God in everything. And then we shall have a pure heart. Following the attitudes is a beautiful analogy, which I did not ask Trevor to read. It's very familiar and probably inspired a song that our children delight in singing. Jesus said very simply, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. 
Jesus' words were a call for each person to bring their individual light into the darkness to provide by the way they lived brilliant illumination into the shadows that hide the evil of our world. The light of our lives as Christians is the teaching of Jesus. For far too long, we haven't put the real essence of Jesus' teaching into practice. Jesus was a radical. His teachings were controversial. He challenged every authority of his day. His teachings were not sweet platitudes. They demanded the willingness to stand in conflict with injustice, with prejudice, with racism, with unfairness, with all that demeans God's gift of life in every single individual. In our church family, there are at least a dozen nationalities and races represented. Many of these people have endured prejudice, abuse, discrimination, and have been singled out only because of their appearance. In our larger community, there are Orthodox Jews, Muslims, Sikhs, all three easily identifiable by the way they dress, and all three have been victims of verbal and sometimes physical abuse at the hands of ignorant, prejudiced groups. When a black man cannot go jogging in his own neighborhood where he has lived for years for fear of being stopped, questioned, and possibly arrested, I am outraged. And when a Chinese man walking with his three-year-old daughter on a street in Pasadena is accosted by a group of white youth, I am outraged. And when a Muslim woman cannot go shopping in a grocery store in Van Nuys, without hearing negative remarks about her and her dress, I am outraged. <clears throat> Whenever there is physical or verbal or emotional discrimination toward any individual or group, we should all be outraged. Outraged and determined that no longer can we sit idly by. Our lights have to shine more brightly than they have ever shown before by speaking up, by intervening, by lobbying, by peacefully demonstrating, by demanding of elected officials more positive changes, and by walking in the footsteps of Jesus and standing for those things for which he stood. Whatever it means to you to let your light shine more brightly than it has ever shown then let it shine now. We must not let this hour and this opportunity to make positive changes pass us by. Amen. foolish I've made bad decisions I block out the news turn my back on religion don't have no degree I'm somewhat naive I've made it this far on my own but lately that stuff ain't been getting me higher I lift up my head and the world is on fire there's dread in my heart and fear in my bones and I just don't know what to say maybe I'll pray
you'll find me in church reading the bible but i am still here and i'm still your disciple i'm down on my knees i'm begging you please i'm broken alone and afraid and i'm not a saint i'm more of a sinner and i don't want to lose but i fear for the winner when i try to explain the words go away and that's why i'm stood here so I'm gonna pray, pray, I'm gonna pray. I never believed in you, but I'm gonna pray. Talk about freedom, everyone prays in the end. Everyone prays in the end. Oh, won't you call me? Can we have a one on one, please? Let's talk about freedom. Everyone prays in the end. Everyone prays in the end. And I'm Good morning, church family. I hope this Sunday finds you all safe and well. Um, I'm very happy to be and honored to be talking to you this morning, although I confess it's with a little bit of trepidation that I bring you this communion meditation. After the events of these past weeks and days, I went to some of my uh, compatriots in the men's group and Pastor Bob and I said, you know, maybe, maybe somebody else should take this slot this week. I've just been profoundly aware uh, even more than ever of who among us has the right to have their voices heard and who does not. Um, at any rate, uh, they didn't let me off the hook, so you guys are stuck with me, unfortunately. Um, so uh, I hope you'll bear with me as I share with you uh, from one church family member to another. It's uh, Thursday as I record this for you all, and as of today, the Curfew has been lifted in the city of Los Angeles, and hopefully that means that the worst of the unrest is behind us. Um, and if that's the case, what that really means is that the real work and soul searching is just beginning. Um, and either way, uh, whatever uh, is going on in the world uh, as we sit down this morning, prepare for communion, it's a profound moment, I think, in our history. And uh, coincidentally, it's that moment in the service when we take a moment to really focus on the example uh, of the life of Christ, his sacrifice as represented in this table. And as I think about that example uh, this morning, I find myself remembering that um, Christ came with a message of radical peace in a time of strife and that he came with an open heart welcoming to everyone as equal children of God. And he came with a profound sense of humility despite who he was. He washed the feet of his own disciples right before sharing this meal with him. At the same time, he came with an unimaginable courage. When he saw evil, he stood up publicly. When he saw injustice, he named it. He never wavered, he never backed down, no matter the danger, no matter the cost, even to the point of making the ultimate sacrifice, and through the power of his teaching and of his actions, 
he changed the world. So my prayer for myself, um, as much as for the rest of us, is that as we move forward in these days and weeks ahead, we can move forward with a similar sense of humility, that we can listen, that we can put others before ourselves, that we can also move forward in peace, um, even as we have the courage to stand up against injustice, to name evil when we see it without fear, no matter the cost, and uh, stand together with our equal brothers and sisters in Christ. And let's change the world. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's Table. The table where everyone and everybody is welcome, not because we deserve it, but because Jesus did it for us. And he said that we should do it in remembrance of him, remembrance of the time when he was having dinner with his friends. And while they were eating, he took bread, blessed it, gave thanks, broke it and gave to them saying, eat from it, because this is my body that is broken for you. After that, he took the cup, gave thanks, bless it, and give to them saying, drink from it, because this is my blood that is poured out for many, for the forgiveness of the sins. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you bring to our life. We thank you because your love is pouring out in this world. We thank you for these times that we are passing because we are learning. We are learning that you are love and we are learning to love each other. We thank you for the sacrifice that your son Jesus did for the forgiveness of all sins. Thank you, Lord, for the bread, for the wine, for the opportunity to be part of your table. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's participate. Hi, church family. It's a difficult time in our country. Many people are fearing for their safety. Many people are outraged by injustices that continue to happen, and many continue to worry about the coronavirus. I wish that there were simple solutions, but I do know one thing that is simple. God wants us to be safe, to be healthy, and to be free. God doesn't want bad things to happen to his children. Bible verse Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In Deuteronomy 31 6, Moses says, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave nor forsake you. In the Lord's prayer, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. By saying these words, we are praying and hoping for God's will to be done here. We trust him and we trust his plans for us. So in these times of unrest, please be assured that God has a plan and that he will protect us. 
I also see good things happening in the midst of these hard times. Peaceful protests with those of all races supporting those who have been hurt. Police kneeling with protesters to show solidarity. Our food pantry continuing to give out food to those who need it. People in our church shopping for those who can't go out and reaching out to those who are alone to show them that we care. Families celebrating graduations in unexpected ways because the students who are graduating have accomplished so much. In graduation speeches, you often hear, now that you have accomplished so much, go forth and give to others. Use your gifts for the betterment of others. That comes from Luke 12, 48, which says, to whom much is given, much will be required. You, our church family, can give your gifts too, whether it be tithing, donating food, speaking up for others who don't have power, or cheering someone up who is feeling alone. Giving your gifts to improve the lives of others will also brighten up your outlook. If you'd like to give a monetary donation to the church, you can do it by mailing a check to First Christian Church of North Hollywood, 4390 Colfax Avenue, Studio City, California, 91604 or go to www.fccnh.org and follow the links to make a donation online. However you give of yourself, please know that the world appreciates your gifts. You make the world a better place. Thank you. That brings us to the conclusion of our service of worship today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please know that the ministry of our church continues through Bible study, meditation groups, feeding the hungry in the park, our food pantry, and a variety of other ministries. If you have a special need for prayer, please send it to the church office at prayers at fccnh.org. We hope you will tell your friends about this service of worship and that you will join us every Sunday at 10 o'clock, same time, same station. And now please join me for the benediction and the congregational singing of Let There Be Peace on Earth and let it begin with me. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, lift up the light of his countenance upon you, and give you peace this day and always. Amen. Amen.